I said, fix it for me. And we are live. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for joining me. And this is your Omi Inca live coming to you from Spreaker. We're in the home of Spreaker. We broadcast under the, or we are not on our uh, regular show where I normally do Facebook, but this is the Spreaker show with Omi Inca's broadcaster. And we are coming back at you this e this morning with looking at the black agenda. We are now talking about the black agenda. Will you tell somebody that Omi is on this afternoon bringing you the black agenda? And this black agenda will express the opinions of Omi Inca only and not of the broadcaster. So I want to alert you that these are the opinions of Omi Inca 7, bringing you my perspective. If you would like to join in and be a part of this discussion, I invite you to be a part of this discussion. We are now signing on with YouTube. Hello, YouTube. We are going on with Spreaker, and we are bringing you the Black Agenda, coming from a Black Soul Sister, from an Indigenous Black Soul Sister. Now, we know that we have a term out there called the, um, the Descendants of Slaves, and I don't know if I can properly use that name or not. I haven't been signed in as a member. So I'm going to call myself and us the indigenous first world people. How about it, people? We are on to something. We are now getting the opinions of our people who count the most. And this is not just breaking news. It is accelerated news because it's high time that we have 
talk from our own perspective about what it is the people want and what we need. Now, let's talk about the election that's coming up and what we are to do as a group, as a communal effort to make sure we give the people what they want. I'm giving you the bucket naked truth. Believe it or not, I've been trained by the best. Coming right out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, we dealt with these issues on our radio show and we made sure we gave the people the bucket naked truth. And that's what we're going to be giving you today. Now, uh, that was, let me see here if we uh, have any time left on that. Okay, now, we... Hold on. Okay. And we're just going to go live here with you on Spreaker. Stay tuned for the next commercial. I'll be reciting some poetry. Stay tuned. No, I won't settle. Read by the author, Sherelle Omiinka. Hold on. Biliaco Garth. I don't know why I can't. Let's sit here. Sometimes these things work, and sometimes they don't. No, I won't settle. Okay, let's see here. Uh, I'm seeing if it's working. Let me try it over here. Voices out of Zion. Okay. Arranged by the author, Omiika. Uh, let's see here. Now, hold on tight, ladies and gentlemen. We are trying to see. Can you hear me out there uh, on speaker? I would like to say hotep to all of you and welcome, welcome to this featured topic on the Black Agenda. We are going somewhere with this, ladies and gentlemen. And we want you to know that we are not just playing and cutting the fool here today, but we are talking about what it is that black folk want and how we can express that to make sure that our listening audience know that we are not going on with the okie doke and that we are truly trying to tell you what it is the people want. And we are going to make sure that you understand that black folks do have a bid in this. And we have got to start standing up using our Ortar platforms to talk about what it is that we are looking for in an agenda for the black folk. And I'm going to go down the list here. I want to talk about Medicare first because we have gotten a bad deal on Medicare in the past. And because Obama has come and took over the Medicare field to give us a Medicare plan that can sometimes be uh, difficult for black folk because they have to pay out premiums and co-pays. Now, black folks don't want to pay no co-pay. They don't want to have to pay every time they go in the doctor for an annual review which can sometimes cost up to $500 to $1,000, depending on which test the doctor is ordering. So let me take it from there. Please, folk, understand that you're not talking to an amateur when it comes to the medical field and understanding what goes into the DRG and the regulation. We know that any bill must be customary in the area of the particular specialty. No doctor can go and start charging outside of customary and what is normally charged for that procedure. So we have doctors giving us alternative preventative maintenance that you should have and that they suggest that you should go and take your flu shot, go and have your colonial colonectomy uh, test, your uh, heart attack or your, uh, your heart disease test, your mammogram, all of these suggestions about preventative maintenance. Well, what about alternative 
preventative maintenance. Maybe we can turn the chain on things and turn the tide and say, look, we want to be in on the mix when we decide what's best for us in preventative maintenance, alternative, naturopathic medicine. There's a few of you I'm going to speak about who are really on top of this and that are giving the people what they want, and we're going to talk about it this morning. Now, if black folks had their say-so and said that they wanted to participate in on what these alternative treatments are, I'm sure it would be acupuncture. And some of you are giving acupuncture. Let me give you your prompts. And I know that those uh, Humana Plus programs are giving uh chiropractic uh, services, and also F, also um, Blue Cross Blue Shield, Anthem, are also giving their chiropractic services as an option. Now, how about other areas such as massage therapy? Well, I don't think Humana made the mark on that, but we do have Blue Cross Blue Shield who is offering that ability to get those massages throughout the year. I don't know if it's continuous, but there may be a certain number that they're allowing you to get per year. Nevertheless, that is an excellent add-on preventative maintenance for those of us who suffer from arthritis. If arthritis got you on the run, you need to understand that having these options as a preventative maintenance can be beneficial. Now, I didn't say cure, and don't anyone make the mistake of using the word cure, because we're not curing anything here. We're talking about alternative, preventative maintenance that should be in our Medicare plan, but is not. Now, acupuncture has recently come up as a preventative maintenance, and Anthem Blue Cross Shield knows the benefit of the acupuncture and how someone can benefit from a second opinion by getting alternative treatments for conditions that are running rampant. Great job you did, Anthem, by adding that. Just to let a few of you know that enrollment is over. It was over in December the 7th. You had a chance to change. You might have another chance in the month of January. But check with your Medicare. If you are on Medicare, check with them. Because these are what the things are that people want. I'm telling you what the black people want, okay? Now, if they can get a package like that, ooh, boy, they're on their way. And not to mention topping it off with silver sneakers. And what is silver sneakers? I'm giving you what the people want. It allows you to go to the gymnasium. And most of your elderly people who are on Medicare, who are 62 or older, are usually getting Medicare, and they're paying their premium, they're paying for the Part B, usually, and Part A will be paid from your Medicare. Now, don't think that somebody's giving you anything free. You're paying a hefty mark for your Medicare. Trust me, it was $135, and it's about to go up to $144 a month. But this is what the people want. They de- they really don't want a copay if they could help it. But unfortunately, we can't do very much about the Medicare on this end of it. We don't want any copays when we have to go into the doctor for routine checkups and examination for our teeth, x-rays, and what have you. We don't want those copays. And we don't want an emergency hospital stay copay. But unfortunately, it's a little difficult to get those copays down unless you have both Medicaid and Medicare. And the only way you're going to have Medicaid and Medicare is you're going to have income, you're going to have the income, low income 
that qualifies you to be able to carry Medicaid and Medicare. Now, these dual plans can cut down on your co-pays as well as your out-of-pocket fees and prescription fees if you're getting extra help. But this is what the people want, that extra help. So, people, you got to understand you have to apply for extra help. And if your income level is below the poverty line, then you might qualify for some extra help. But you need to check with your Medicare and Medicaid if you are on Medicaid. How do you get on Medicaid? You have to apply for it. You have to go online or you have to go and make a phone call to Medicaid or to the family services and inquire about getting eligible for Medicaid. Now, if your income is so low, don't hesitate because this is what the people want. They want their medical to be set up so they're not paying all these out-of-pocket fees. And every time they go in uh, to the hospital for emergency, the first seven days they're paying somewhere in the neighborhood of $295 to $310 a day for seven days. Boy, you can go on the poverty line after you get out of the hospital. But after that seventh day, they will kick in and they will pick up those co-pays for you, okay, in some of the plans. You have to go through these plans, and now that this that this uh, open enrollment is over with, I mean, this is like after the fact. You should have been on top of things and listened to your commercials on TV. They're all over the news about go and examine all of these plans to take a look at them because it's open enrollment. You can change now. Some people have missed that open enrollment. That window won't be open again until January the 2nd for some people or January the 1st. But you need to get in contact with social services to find out, do you still have the option to upgrade or to alter and change? Some people want to change because they now want their services to be in transportation. Or they might want to get those meals that are delivered after you come out of the hospital. They might want those services. Or they might want chiropractic services. Or they might want acupuncture. Or they might want massage therapy. You could look at the plans to see who have that. Some of you can benefit from alternative services. This is something brand new that they've started with these alternative naturalistic programs that you can take the massage therapy and acupuncture. It's brand new for me. Well, I jumped on it and I can't tell you what to do, but I know what benefits me. Silver Sneakers has always been one of my favorites. Check it out for those of you who are seniors. Now, this is what the people want in Medicare and they don't want doctors calling them suggesting which of these flu shots to take. And now they're paying you. They've even got a plan where you get a card. It's sort of like a MasterCard. And you can, for every procedure you have done, like your physicals, you can get $25 for your physical. And it goes on your card. And then if you've had your mammogram, and if you've had your, um, uh, if you've had, uh, your flu shots, and and so on and so forth. They give you credit for this because they want to keep you in the loop. Now, they even have something where the nurse can come out to your house to make sure you're taking your pills right and measuring them off. Now, we're getting a lot excess help that we can do without. That is not what the people want. They don't want nobody coming out to their house to tell them how to take their medicine. Now, if they are that lethargic, they need to have a nurse on duty, a possibly an aide or assistant. But when you start, black folks are not too open about just letting any old body in their house that could be measuring off their medicine and who don't really have any business in their home. They're not looking for that kind of service. That's not what the people want. They would like to have a phone line 
to be able to call into the doctor from time to time to ask the doctor about various different side effects and symptoms of this medicine that we're taking because there could be a lot of symptoms that have contraindication that need to be attended to immediately. Now that's what the people want. And in a full package and summing it up in the medical aspect, I might have left out one or two things, but just in case I had, just know that this is not the opinion of the doctors or nurses, but of Omi Inca 7. And we all have opinions, and I sure hope you have one too. Now let me move on. What is it for the black agenda that we're looking for for these political people to bring to our neighborhood? Number one, let's talk about housing. Oh boy, if you're out there, you want to talk about housing, come on in this room. I'm inviting you in. This is Omi's Organic Broadcaster. And boy, do we need to talk about housing. We know back there in 2008, the industry plummeted with foreclosures of black homes and white homes. However, more predatory lending was extended to black women who were educators. I know about this because the black educators came together and we stood up against this predatory lending and robo-stamping. Oh yes, this is what the people want. Come on now, put your ear close to this radio so you can hear what I'm about to say. We were fed up to the point where we marched ourselves over to the courthouse And we petitioned and fought because of this predatory lending, a large portion of us lost our homes. And our homes were sold online, auctioned off online, unbeknowing to us, and foreclosed on even after we were given the deeds and the titles to our property. How do you phantom that? Because once you get the deeds and property, the deeds and title to your property, the only way somebody can get your property is they must have to satisfy you on the deed first if you're in first position. They cannot come as a second position person and take your first position spot. They must satisfy you by paying you off or handing you back the home. How is it that somebody online that is bidding for your property can get in first position of your deeds and title? Well, that's what was happening, listening audience. I'm going to tell you what the people want. A large portion of black women who were working class lost their homes. I know I was a part of that. We struggled to fight for our homes because we got predatory Loans. They sought us out, knowing that if they gave us an adjustable rate, that our adjustable loans would fluctuate and balloon to the point where you could not afford to pay the loan or the note anymore. They knew what they were doing. They purposely gave us robo stamping. They told us we can get a modification. We waited on the government modification. It never came. And then they said, okay, okay, why don't you do a short sale? But you couldn't get the appraisal done properly so you could do a short sale. They had us jumping through all kinds of hoops to keep and save our property. But a lot of educated women were dismayed and they were upset. Because when they went to the courthouse to fight for their property, there was all, all kinds of rigmarole that was going on. And finally, some of the judges said, here, here, I'm going to give you the deed and title to your home. Right in front of the jury. But at the same time, you would find out the property was foreclosed on thereafter. What kind of rigmarole is that? Foreclosed on thereafter. And then 
agencies found out about this predatory lending. They were disgusted. They were going to reimburse you money back for the losses you had. But it was only certain years that could get that service. Not all of the people who lost their homes through foreclosure were reimbursed. Now, what is predatory lending? Predatory lending is giving you an adjustable loan. Knowing that it might start off at a low level of maybe 7%, but in the next two years when it adjusts, it could possibly adjust up to uh, two points over, and then a year after that, two points more, and finally to the point where it balloons and goes up so high, you cannot afford the adjustments that are being made on it. Because you are busy trying to pay taxes to stay up on taxes. Now, I'm going to tell you what the people want. How is it that you can take these 13 banks that were found guilty of doing this predatory lending and tell them that you sanction them because of non-compliance and they now must come into compliance and they must go back and give proper adjustments, modifications to the people, and they are the one extending the correction. How is it that a, uh, someone is going to correct their error when they never admitted to doing it? You cannot depend on them to make the changes and make the correction. You should bring in a third party, a neutral party that has no vested interest in this to make sure that the follow-up of the correction is done appropriately or else you'll have exactly what is going on today. And that is reordering of the predatory lending all over again. Oh yes, it's happening all over again. Now it's so difficult for a black family to get a loan and to go in and to petition for these low interest loans. They are looking at all kinds of stipulation where their credit scores have to have, has to be higher. And they've been told, some of the bankers, not to lend to minorities. And minorities are still not getting loans in the first home buyers. Now, let's get on all these programs that they have out here. Oh my God, they got programs, girl. You can get a home. Go on over there and get in one of those programs. Yeah, pay you $75 and take that class so you can learn about what you what you are to do as a new home buyer. You take the classes, you learn about HUD, you learn about the criteria for your down payment money because at the end of this class, they're going to give you a certificate for your down payment of up to $5,000, between $3,000 and $5,000 down on your new house. Okay, they have many programs out there, so many you can't keep up with them, and so many that those who are supposed to implement them don't even know how to implement them. They're pulling your leg, making you think they know about all the programs. And let me talk a little bit about Fannie Mae and Fannie Mac. I know that Fannie Mae and Fannie Mac may be gone by now, and a lot of programs are gone, but the neighborhood housing criteria looked like it would be the one that you would want to use. And then they also had um, USDA direct and undirect loans. They had programs at the programs. First home buyer program so that you can get your down payment. If you were a fireman, policeman, or teacher, you could even buy a HUD home for 50% off if you could find one. Because once you put your bid in for them, before you know it, somebody had already bid it for that. And these were developments who were buying these homes right from up under these firemen, policemen, and teachers. I know about that because every time I bid it, somebody else had got it. Now, if there's a war on good homes and, and buying them and you cannot purchase them because th there's a need for them, so they, they own the market a short period of time. But when the government found out this was all an error and it was done purposely to the lower socioeconomic people, primarily the African-American people. I'm going to tell you what they want. African-American people want fairness. 
They want to be able to have a piece of the American dream. They want to be able to access housing without someone causing them to have to render their firstborn in order to buy a piece of the all-American dream. As an educated master degree teacher, in demand all over the country, I think if I got the short end of the stick, I can imagine how many other black females got the short end of the stick who didn't have the education and housing like I did. I took the classes. I sat in on the seminars. I learned the information. I was informed and I was ready. And I had even sat down with the seller of the house and we negotiated outside of having a realtor and I placed my down payment. And then I was told, I was. I also indicated I have a certificate of completion noting that I can have my down payment forgiven in three years if I remain in the house up to three to five years. I completed that process of having that down payment money forgiven that they gave me in that certificate. So I was one of those recipients of this of the down payment money and the forgiveness money because I fulfilled my requirement. However, the banks that gave out the predatory lending did not fulfill their requirement. And I don't have to call off those 13 banks. All of you know who they are. They've been, you know, discussed many times. I won't even go into that direction now uh, on the grounds that it might intimidate me. But I will say that we heeded the call of all of the necessary preparation to purchase a home. So I was in good standing to purchase my first townhome. I didn't jump up and say, I want to buy a single family. I said, well, I want to buy within my means. But how is it that somebody can convince me to take out an adjustable loan, FHA, instead of a conventional loan at 3% on a fixed rate? Because, see, they came at you with this lower interest rate on the adjustable, and you figured it's best to get in at a low end and that there will be a cap on this uh, loan. But there wasn't. It kept exploding and accelerating and ballooning. And we were left at a deficit of having to either do a short sale or go into foreclosure. Yes, I know it was a lot of people out there that says, well, I know what, I'm going to file bankruptcy and I'm going to save my home. My dear heart, that was only a temporary fix. Now, if you went to chapter 13 and said, I'm going to reestablish my bills and I am going to not put my home in the, in the actual um bankruptcy chapter 13, I'm going to reaffirm my home and save it. But you had to have a plan that was set up where you couldn't miss a payment so that you made sure you made your payments for at least five years consistently. Otherwise, that whole plan would dismantle. Yes, I'm going to tell you what the people want. They want fairness and they want some new programs to be on the market that are not necessarily Airmark for the black woman or the minority people in general. And we don't want this redlining where you can't go into a certain community and buy homes from other white folks who want to sell their home. We don't want that. I went through that too when I got ready to sell my home in an all-white neighborhood. That's right. I was one of the first blacks in an all-white neighborhood. And when I got ready to sell my home, we went through the regentrification process of almost having to give it away because white folks wouldn't touch it with a 10-foot pole. We had to lower the price. And we had to do all sorts of things to get that house sold. All but give it over to the realtor to find somebody, anybody that would buy from a black. We've been given a raw deal here, and it can't happen anymore. This is what the people want. 
This is a black agenda talking to you. I'm talking to you from a perspective where I can relate to you. I am a black African-American indigenous woman. So I'm telling you as a spokesperson for myself and my family, I can't say if I'm speaking for every black person. You have an agenda. You have a voice. Now voice your opinion. You can call into the station and you can tell us what the people want. I'm telling you what the people want. And if you don't believe me, who can you believe? I'm telling you in this housing race, some of us are still been found wanting. We want that all-American dream. We want property. We want land. And we want to be able to buy in the neighborhoods where we want to buy, where they have the homes that are appreciating, not depreciating. It's a shame that we have to buy in white neighborhoods so we can get our homes appreciated properly and that we are not losing value in our home. But this is what all minorities and African Americans want. This is what the people want. They want a piece of the all-American dream. We want to be able to take out the equity in our home and to pay off our debts and school loans if we have them. We want forgiveness for our school loans. You know why? Because they fed us a crock of cream on the college education. Talking about student loans, all those who have taught for the government, gone abroad, all their loans should be forgiven. Oh, yes, because we put our lives on the line and we went abroad and we held the ground and we held the spot and we gave out and gave in and we came back. We couldn't even get on unemployment. We couldn't even draw from the unemployment line, y'all. That's not what the people want when the teachers go abroad and they work for the United States Army. No matter how many years you put in, if you put in one year, two days short from a year, you're entitled to a ticket take parade when you come back. Somebody to celebrate you being abroad during 9-11 Somebody to celebrate all the work you've done to support the military behind the scenes. I don't care if you were a doggone civilian. You were a needed substance in that military. Yes, those teachers who have gone abroad and who have worked diligently for the United States Army. We want our ability to have our full retirement. We don't want to lose any years because we went abroad. We want to be able to bring those years back with us and use them as our retirement here on state side. That's what the people want. And as a teacher, we also want to make sure that we're not strapped and stuck abroad with no way to come back home because of some foolishness that they have maneuvered to circumvent your full year with them abroad, and then to tell you that they cannot transport you back, and you have to do a congressional lawsuit in order to make them return you back to your proper sites back home. This is what the people want. Now I'm telling you, I'm sure these teachers would allow me to speak for them. This is what they want. They don't want any more garbage about you've got to be a military on the front line and you've got to be a soldier. When you take your assignments to go abroad, you don't ask, is this a soldier's job? You take the contract and sign it because you're putting your life on the line just like any soldier when you're behind the scenes. They're quicker to take a civilian and hold them hostage than they are to take a soldier because we're living off of the grounds on the site of the enemy. And we're not necessarily in a, 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 in an area where all of the soldiers are protected. We are unprotected. Those are all the things that need to change for those teachers that go abroad. Some of them 
go abroad for a lifetime. They only come home during the summer. They are more susceptible to any type of danger than any soldier I know of. This is what the people want. And I'm telling you from a perspective of a teacher that was sought after. I didn't ask to go to the military. They sought after me and recruited me and baited me and asked me to go abroad to assist them. And I fulfill my duty. I asked you, are you fulfilling your duties for the teachers that come back here stateside and wanting to retire and Heaven forbid if they should have to retire early like I did with a disability. We don't want to have to go through any type of rigmarole and bureaucracy in order to receive our disabilities under uh, physical disability from standing long periods of time and holding down the fort and making sure that you are on the site and and be becoming ill because of it. So I, I want to tell you that I know the teachers would agree with me if, if I spoke out for them. We want something put in writing that when a teacher goes abroad, she will always be able to return with the assistance of the military, no matter what the circumstances are. You never leave a family behind. You never have the Germans have to come to your aid to pack your things up to assist you and to ask you to surrender your ID card for one of theirs in order for them to see you as a German and assist you. This is what the people want. And I know the teachers would agree with me because we've all had a sit down and we've talked about this. And we asked ourselves, how could this happen? And we don't want the military to bring over other workers who don't deserve our promotion and give them our promotions when we were in line as minorities to promote. We don't want the military to circumvent us and to send us back home without position, all in lieu of giving somebody our position who were non-Melanite people just because they were there. This is not, that's not what the people want. We want our proper promotions. And we want to be acknowledged for the work we've done. And if they have falsely accused us, we want a correction and an apology done in the public. This is what the people want. This is what the people want. Now, we're talking about the black agenda. There are more black soldiers on the front line that go to the military, that support the military than anything else. But we are devastated when we go abroad and have to use JAG to fight our battles. We want attorneys to come to our rescue to assist us as civilians. We don't want to be barred from the legal system in JAG. This is what the people want. This is the black agenda of what we want. Now, I've talked about health care and housing and support for the education system, for the teachers. I want to also say that the people want to make sure 